This is the Mercedes Euclid Model 1. It was designed by Christel Hammond. He employed a new mechanism called proportional levers. Here's an image from the very long patent. He took great care to design a very well built machine. Just look how much effort he put into the crank handle. He wanted to make sure that the user would never put too much force on the machine and so the user always cranked against a spring that's inside of the crank handle. Mercedes, not the car company, used Hammond's mechanism long after he left the company in 1922, making all sorts of complicated looking machines. This image from the Smithsonian is reversed. There, that's better. They made more conventional models too, and during the Cold War the company was in the Eastern Bloc, so its name was changed to Celatron, and it continued to make calculators until about 1975. The Mercedes Euclid Model 1 was placed on tilted feet for the user's ease. It was rather industrial looking with a lot of bits and bobs. Pressing that button, you could move the spring-loaded carriage one spot to the left, or you could press that one and slide it as you will. That's the off and on switch for the carriage necessary during automatic division. That little hole would line up with that part where you could take this little thumb screw and lock down the carriage for transportation, which is helpful as the carriage itself is very big and heavy. Here I'm activating the uh, add subtract lever. The spring inside that drum brings the carriage back to first position. Those intermediate gears jump up and down which is necessary to allow the carriage to shift without needing to tilt. This machine only really adds. Here are his proportional gears in addition, and when I switch it to subtraction, then the gears will add the complement nine numbers. Here I'll add one, and then I'll subtract one, and you'll see the complements in action. This pin is used during multiplication and locks together the counter and the add subtract levers. That's a pre Kensington lock attachment point. So if I want to multiply 25 by itself, the first thing I do is put in the locking pin. I'll enter 25 into the sliders and then I'll spin it five times. Then I'll carefully shift it one space using that little carriage knob and spin it two more times. And if I happen to accidentally spin it three times, good thing those pins are in there to lock down those levers and I'll just subtract it. Now I don't necessarily want to commit myself in saying this, but I'm pretty sure this Model 1 was the first machine to debut stop division, which meant that every time it overflowed or underflowed, the user had to interact with the machine somehow. So to do division, the first thing I did was take out the locking pin, then I'll shift the carriage over, I'll enter in the uh, dividend on the carriage, which is so easily done with those little twiddler knobs, then I'll uh, add the divisor, up there, move it into, move the carriage lever to on, and then I'll shift it into division. Now I should have shifted it into division before I shifted the carriage, because you'll see with the lever on, the carriage shifts automatically when you touch the division lever. But now I just crank away, and every time it stops, I'll shift those two levers. Now normally on other machines when you divide 
you subtract until it underflows. Then you add the underflow, then you shift, and then subtract the next place. This machine isn't doing that. It's subtracting until it underflows, then it shifts the carriage and adds the next place until it overflows, and then back and forth. Each method is equally fast and fun. When I get to each stop on division, the movement on the lever, the little extra movement, is against the spring and not the mechanism itself. That was smart on Hammond's part. So that's the Mercedes Euclid Model 1. It weighs 30 pounds. Thanks for watching.